Hello everybody, I'm Rich Holder, and if you're anything like me and you love Boost, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, so you get notified when I do all this boosty goodness. Today I'm going to answer three questions. Richard, what happens when I put a camshaft in my turbo motor? How can I make more horsepower per PSI? And most importantly, why can't I just turn up the boost? All those answers are right here. Okay, guys, let's jump right into my favorite subject, obviously boost, because as we know, everything is better with boost. So what I want to show you is what happens when we add boost to a stock camshaft, and then what happens when we add boost to an aftermarket cam. In this case, it's a truck Norris cam. But I want to show you the difference in power between the NA combinations and then the difference in power between the boosted combinations to see what a camshaft really gives us. But the real question here is at the end. So we know that if we put a camshaft in, it's going to make it better. We know it's going to make more power, even at the same boost. We've shown that many, many times. But why can't you just turn the boost up and not buy the camshaft? The reality is that you can. But let's jump right in and look at all this. We got a little bit of math, so don't worry about it. It's very, very simple. So we have our 5.3 liter. This one is an L33 that we ran, the aluminum motor I've run many, many times. And we ran it first with the stock camshaft. And then we upgraded it with, an, we've run a number of different cams. This from Elgin, from Brian Tooley. We ran this, the L33 cam. We ran uh, Chapacabra. We ran all kinds of cams on this. So, but this is, this first test is the stock cam versus the Truck Norris cam, which by the way, like every cam, obviously is definitely a boost cam. And I'm going to show you exactly that. So we run our L33 long tube headers, Mazira electric water pump, Holly. We had 80 pound injectors in it. We ran it with a stock truck intake manifold and throttle body and the 799 heads and yada, 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 all that stuff. Just basically ran it stock the way that we always run it on the dyno and running this trim with a stock cam, 365 horsepower, 389 foot pounds, true to form on these stock motors makes more torque than it makes horsepower. They're looking primarily for torque production out of these motors because it is a truck motor. But what happens when we add a camshaft to this thing? Here's what happened when we added our truck Norris cam. Picked up quite a bit of power, 424 horsepower. Peak torque was also up. And as we saw with in this truck Norris cam, very good cam for a 5.3. These smaller cams work very well. It allowed this thing to continue to make power. I mean, the power curve was very flat all the way out past 6,500 RPM. It also had a lot more torque. We saw a very tiny loss below 3,000 RPM. <laughs> and Brian keeps telling me, no, it's those it's inch and seven eighths headers that you run. But at any rate, we ran the same headers with both of them. But it did pick up quite a bit of power. In fact, we improved power by 59 horsepower measured peak to peak on our NA combination to keep that number in mind because we're going to be doing a little math with it later on. But the real question is, what happens when we run the stock cam with boost. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of our truck Norris cam. That will come back later. Here's what happened when we ran. I'm going to go ahead and zing myself up over here. Get out of the way. Maybe maybe right down here is okay. There we go. So the we're adding a single turbo, we added an S475 Summit Racing T6 turbo. Good turbo, kind of a low dollar one. We had our air to water intercooler, the Pro Charger one. We ran this on, I think we ran the boosted stuff on E85. We ran around seven and a half pounds on this, not a lot, just just a sprinkling of boost on this thing. And we, we ended up making uh, 546 horsepower. Peak torque was up at 589 foot-pounds. Please note, just like with the NA combination, it made more torque than horsepower because the turbo, if you add a consistent amount of boost, which this boost curve was fairly consistent, if you add a consistent amount of boost, it's just going to mirror the original NA power curve, and that's exactly what it did. We made more torque than horsepower. So this combination obviously works out fairly well. So the turbo added 181 horsepower at about 7.5 pounds, which is about 24.5, 24 and a half horsepower per pound of boost. So that's how much we gain on average with each pound of boost using this stock baseline motor because we're gonna change that when we add a camshaft because when we make the, the naturally aspirated motor more powerful, we will actually end up making more horsepower per pound of boost. Richard, that's just crazy talk. No, let's find out what it does right now. 
Okay guys, I showed you what happened when we added the truck Norris cam and replaced the stock cam. Then I showed you what happened when we added boost to our stock cam. Now it's time to take a look and see what happens when we add boost to the truck Norris cam and then we'll compare both of them after that. So this was our truck Norris deal. This was the L33 with the truck Norris cam, headers, Mazir electric water pump, all that stuff made 424 horsepower and 415 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we added our turbo kit, which means an S475 uh, T6 Summit turbo, the uh, stock exhaust mask molds feeding the white pipe, and we had two turbo smart wastegates, and we had our air to water intercooler running dyno water through it. Here is what happened when we added our turbo to the truck Norris cam. It did the same thing that it does on the on the stock camshaft. It you know around seven and a half pounds. It added power, and we that's what we love about turbos. Peak power was up to 633 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 625 horsepower, which is interesting uh, because we also made more horsepower than torque once we added the truck Norris cam. Not by a lot, but by some. And the same kind of thing is happening here. As I said, when you, so we got 33 versus 25. So when we add boost to this, as long as the boost is fairly consistent, the power curves are just going to, the turbo power curve is just going to mirror the NA power curve. It just adds kind of a consistent amount of power, still same, sh same shape, kind of making power at the same engine speed and making peak torque at the same engine speed. All of that works out the same. That's why I tell you when I tell you every cam is a turbo cam, you're just really multiplying what's there. And speaking of multiplication, when we did our turbo at about around seven and a half pounds on this combination, we picked up 209 horsepower which if you take a look at that relative to the NA power output, we are making, or if you look at the difference between the NA power output and the turbo output, we were making 28 horsepower per pound of boost. And why are we doing that? I thought that that's all about the turbo. <laughs> no, the amount of power that you make per pound of boost is actually all about your NA starting point. If we start with a motor that only makes 100 horsepower and we add 14.7 pounds of boost, it's going to be 14.7 or 100 divided by 14.7. So the NA power output that you start with is very, very important. And as we go up in NA power, we actually make more horsepower per pound of boost that's only assuming that the turbo can support that higher power level, which in this case, we'd have a thousand horsepower or so turbo on it. So making 630 horsepower very easy at this kind of boost level. But now let's take a look at a comparison between what happens when we ran our turbo combination uh, with a stock cam and what happens when we ran our turbo combination with the truck Norris cam. We'll look at the power differences there and then we'll talk about how we get from one to the other. Now we can do a comparison between the turbocharged version with a stock cam and the turbocharged version with the truck Norris cam and kind of figure out what's going on and then show you an alternative to putting the camshaft in. Now I do recommend putting some kind of camshaft in an LS as we know the formula is cam springs and boost to make lots of power. But there's another way and it's really gonna depend on how much power you actually wanna make. But let's jump right in here. So this was our turbo version with the stock camshaft. On our 5.3 liter, we made 546 horsepower and a good bit more torque, 589 or 90 foot-pounds of torque. And here is how it compares to running the same amount of boost with the Truck Norris cam. As you can see, the Truck Norris cam in turbocharged form did exactly what the Truck Norris did in naturally aspirated form. It wants to make peak power at a higher engine speed, and it has greater gains as we go up. And we saw previously that the, the Truck Norris cam produced 633 horsepower under boost, and uh, with a stock cam, it produced 546 horsepower, which means that the Truck Norris cam was making like 28 horsepower per pound of boost versus only around 24 and a half horsepower per pound of boost with the stock camshaft. So we know now that, you know, we, we gained about um, somewhere near, uh, we gained 60 horsepower adding the camshaft on the NA motor. We gained a near 90 horsepower, 87 or 88 horsepower, uh, doing the cam comparison on our turbocharged combination with the same boost level around seven and a half pounds. So we gained about 50% more power under boost than we did NA. That's pretty good. That's kind of right on the formula. The amount of power that you gain is kind of multiplied by boost and everything is kind of checking out here. It's working out fairly well. But the question is, can I get this power 
without doing the cam upgrade. Now, like, like I said, I do recommend a cam upgrade. I think it's a good idea, especially a mild cam like this truck north, the Chapacabra, uh, the, the cam motion cam or the, the, um, the summit cam, all of those, any kind of mild cam shaft, really good idea on these combinations. But you can also just turn the boost up. <laughs> so if we do our calculations, we see that we made around 24 and a half horsepower per pound with our stock camshaft. If we wanted to get from the 545 horsepower up to the 635 ish horsepower with the, that we made at the same boost level with the truck north cam, all we have to do is add somewhere around four pounds of boost. So instead of seven and a half pounds, if we ran 11 and a half pounds with the stock cam, we basically would be making the power output that we were making with the cam version. So you can substitute boost for more cam, but here are the warnings for this. One, as we go up in boost, we go up in temperature, we increase the uh, the likelihood of detonation. If you have a good intercooler, honestly, going from seven and a half pounds to 11 or 11 and a half pounds should not be a big deal. Intercoolers typically have you know more capacity than we need. So you're still gonna have a fairly low charge temperature. Just make sure you have cold air going to the turbo and everything should work out well. So if you're a guy that likes the stock idle and wants a stock camshaft, wants the drivability, all that stuff, and all you wanna do is have the power output that the guy made that has a truck Norris cam at the same boost level, all you have to do is raise the boost up and that works very well. Of of course, the flip side to that is if we were to run 11 and a half pounds of boost on our canned version, like with the truck Norris and our 5.3, we would be making a lot more power and not just more power, but more horsepower per pound of boost because we have the can in there, as we always recommend. Our Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. If you're going to put a turbo combination together, you probably should add a camshaft.